Hello, this is the recorded lecture for Chapter uh, 13 on viruses, viroids, and prions. In this chapter, we're going to look at some of the other types of organisms that are out there, um, other than bacteria and the, and the um, uh, 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 eukaryotes and such. And so uh, this is going to uh, be the, this is for Microbiology 230. I am Dr. McGraw. So a glimpse of history, there was a, a situation, or it's a, it's sorry, an affliction, I'll use that term of our tobacco industry, called tobacco mosaic disease in the 1890s. And many bacteria and fungi and protozoa were identified as infectious diseases. D.M. Iwanowski, uh, Martinez, Bajernik, uh, determined the cause or caused by a filterable virus, which is too small to be seen with a light microscope, but it, and it passed through filters for bacteria. So F.W. Towards and F. D. Harella, uh, discovered this filterable virus that destroyed this bacteria. And virus, to them, it meant poison. That was the term they used. Viruses have many features which are more characteristic of complex chemicals. For example, they're still infected following precipitation of ethyl alcohol, suspension, or crystallization. So they are, but they're less like, um, like organisms. Some people believe they are organisms. They are functional organisms, but they're the, the literature would suggest that's not true. So viruses are simply genetic information that is surrounded by a protective coat. They don't have their own metabolism. So the, their genetic information can be in the form of DNA or RNA, either a single strand of each or a double strand of each. And they're inert particles. They have no metabolism, no replication ability, no motility. Their genome, that is their, the, this DNA or RNA that is inside these viruses, they hijack the host cell replication machinery and they reprogram it to create more virons. This is a good example here. Here's a cell that's been hijacked, and it starts creating these virons, which are then released into the system. They're inert outside cells, uh, if you will, the inside, direct activity of the cell, uh, and they're infective agents. So outside the cell, the viruses don't do much, but inside the cell, they really remanage, uh, they redirect all that metabolism. They're infective agents. They're not organisms. That's a term that's commonly used now. They classify, they're, they can classify generally based on uh, type of cell they infect. They can be eukaryotic or prokaryotic. If they're bacterial phages, that means they infect prokaryotes. And they even provide an alternative to antibiotics in some cases. So we could, there's a lot of studies to say, can we use a virus to kill off sort of bacteria? If you download the PowerPoint off of the uh, D2L and you then uh, set it to do the slideshow, you can take a look at the steps of replication of a T4 phage in E. coli. And uh, I'll, I'll let you do that. Um, I can't do it on, on, a, on, uh, on this a collaborate uh, format. Now, most viruses are notable with their small size. The smallest is uh, about 10 nanometers. There's 10, uh, t about 10 genes. The largest is about 800 nanometers. And they, they go from uh, 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 mammal viruses to uh, Pandora viruses. And you can see the different, different viruses we're talking about. Look at the polio virus right here, how small it is uh, compared to E. coli, for instance. Think how different that is in size. Now, viron is a viral particle uh, and is a nucleic acid with protein coat. The protein coat is a capsid. This term we use a capsid or the surrounding protein. It protects the nuclei from, from the environment, mostly acids and uh, other uh, immune agents. It, car it carries required enzymes. It's composed of identical subunits called capsomeres. So this capsid is made up of these little proteins. A, it's a polymer, in a sense, of these monomer of these proteins. The capsid plus the nucleic acid is called a nucleocapsid. Enveloped viruses have a lipid bilayer envelope, and non-enveloped viruses don't. The matrix protein between the nucleocapsid and the envelope, they have that protein, if you will. And then the non-enveloped naked viruses, they lack the envelope, and they're more resistant to disinfectants. So non-enveloped actually have a different resistance. Now, the viral genome, that is the genotype, can either be DNA or RNA, and not, never both. So it's one or the other. And we could call those single or double strand. And so the useful classification is DNA or RNA viruses. Genome can be linear or circular. That means it's in a circular form or a line. It can, like I say, be double or single stranded. Viruses have a protein have protein uh, components for attachment. The phages have tail fibers that allow them to uh, that allow them to uh, insert themselves into the into the host cell. Many animal viruses have those spikes. They allow the viral to attach to a specific receptor sites on given cells. And generally, there's three different uh, types of shapes, if you will, in these viruses, icosahedral, helical, or complex. This looks at the injury of uh, animal viruses in the host cells. Again, you'll have to download the PowerPoint. 
and uh, and um, and then uh, open it up and look at the at the uh, slideshow, and then and then you can click on this, and it'll work for you. The three shapes, like I said, are costohedral, helical, and complex. Now, costohedral is kind of like this. Uh, you see this kind of shape here, if you will. The helical is just basically a tube where there's a, a, sp a spiral of protein. And probably the complex is this, uh, has the nucleocaps at the top, has the tail spike at the bottom, and so on and so forth. So you see the, the differences in the virus. Now, the general characteristics of viruses, the International Committee on Viral Taxonomy, ICVT, publishes a classification of viruses. In the 2013 report, there were 6,000 viruses, 2,820 species, 455 genera, 103 families and seven orders. So you can see they're pretty widespread organisms. The key characteristics of viruses include the genome structure, that is the nucleic acid, and the strandedness, whether it's circular or, or linear, and the host that's infected. Other characteristics, for example, are the viral shape, the disease symptoms it causes, or they're also considered as far as the, uh, as far as the general characteristics of a given virus. Now, virus, virus families uh, in the suffix, so Viridiae, for instance, Namely, the name follows no consistent pattern. Some indicate appearance, for example, uh, Corona viridiae uh, form a corona, which means a crown. Others are named for a geographical area from which they first isolated, for example, Buna viridiae uh, is from the Buna Yammer era uh, in Uganda, Africa. The genus is in virus, for example, uh, enterovirus. Species name often is a name for the disease. For example, polio uh, virus causes poliomyelitis. And viruses are commonly referred to only by species names, strangely enough. Um, as opposed to other organisms. Now, viruses often refer to informally the groups of unrelated viruses share groups of infection. Uh, oral fecal root is uh, for the enteric viruses, the respiratory root for respiratory viruses, the zoonotic viruses cause zoonosis, which can occur in animal or humans. Arboviruses for the arthropod born or spread by arthropods, like the mosquito or the TC fly we talked about. They often can infect widely different species. And the important diseases that are caused by these arboviruses include yellow fever, dengue fever, West Nile virus, and lacrosse encephalitis. Now, yellow fever, though it's not common in the United States now, was one of the biggest uh, issues in, in Washington, D.C. when they first uh, put a town there and developed the city. Many of the inhabitants died of yellow fever. The mosquito population was very high and lived in the swamps, which are still there to some degree, in, uh, in Washington, D.C. area. Dengue fever is, is uh, not necessarily in, in the United States. What's the hell? Virus has become pretty prominent in the United States. The cross virus has uh, created a foothold in the United States, but is most common in other uh, third world countries. Now, the three general types of bacterial phages are based on the relationship with the host. Lytic phages, uh, temporary phages, and filamentous phages. And this talks about those groups here. And I'll let you read that table as you, uh, in your own spare time as you look inside the, uh, look inside the PowerPoint. The lytic phage infections or lytic or virulent phages exist, uh, exist host, exit, exit, exit the host, the cell is lysed, and the productive infection new particles are formed. So lytic phases, they, they grow, they cause a growth inside the cell, they kill the cell, and then the cell opens and releases the, the new virons. T4 phage, double stranded DNA as a model, is the entire process, process takes about 30 minutes. The other part of the problem is, is that viruses mutate at a very fast rate, at least every 10th generation. Now think about humans. We don't mutate except about every 300 generations, and that means uh, every 20 or 30 years is one generation, or so 20, 30 years, if you will, on average. So that means that 30 times 300 is, when, is, is, when, is the average of our mutations. Where viruses occur, they have new, uh, new uh, progeny or new generations every 30 minutes. So every 10 generations or less, or every 300 minutes, they go through some sort of mutation. There's a five-step process for this. That is, the, the, the uh, virus will attach to the organism. There's a genome entry. That means they'll insert the, the, uh, the DNA or RNA into the cell. There's synthesis of the DNA RNA with the cell's DNA RNA. There's assembly. That's development of the new, uh, new uh, metabolism to produce more virons. And there's release when the cell is Lice, if you will, the virons are released. Now, attachment is where the phage exploits the bacterial receptors. The genome entry, like the T4 lysosome, degrades the cell wall. The tail contracts and inject, injects the genome through the cell wall and membrane. The synthesis of proteins in the genome, early proteins trans, translated within minutes. The nuclease degrades the host DNA. Protein modifies the host RNA polymerase and is not 
and do not recognize its own promoter. So it basically reprograms the cell to not recognize its own, own uh, nucleic acids, its own DNA RNA. The late proteins are structural proteins like capsids and tails. They, they're produced towards the end of the cycle. Assembly is the maturation part where some of the components spontaneously assemble. Others require a protein scaffold to make that happen. And finally, release. The lysosome produced late in, in infection digests the cell wall. The cell lyses and releases the phages, if you will. And the burst size of T4 can be as many as 200 virons from one single cell. Now, tempered phage infections are option is an option of lytic infection or incorporation of DNA into the host cell genome. There's a lysogenic infection. The infected cell is, lys is a lysogen. And lambda is the phage of the model. So you're seeing here those steps in that process. They're a little different than what we saw before. Now, <clears throat> what, what you're seeing here is that you're seeing that the, the, the injection of the genome into the cell is incorporated in the DNA. And then the DNA goes through mitoses. And that may happen at, at several mitoses uh, episodes. And then the new cell. Uh, at some point in time, a, a trigger goes off, and the cell with that, that genome in it will trigger and reprogram itself to create these neurons. So when it finally triggers and opens up and the, and the lysis occurs, there's thousands of, of bacteria that are releasing these, these viruses. Now, there are, there are uh, phage infections that can occur in, our, in the bacteria in our own gut, and they're very, they're, they're very scary when you think about it because they, they invade the gut, which means they don't really get picked up by our immune system. They inject themselves into the bacteria inside the gut, again, not affect the immune system, and they stay dormant for maybe one, two, three, four, ten generations. And then when they release, they release in giant waves. It's like a tsunami. So not just a few virons or a few hundred virons, but thousands or hundreds of thousands of virons. Now, lambda phage is a linear chromosome. It's complementary single stranded overhangs at ends at the joint inside the host. The resulting circular molecule either directs the lytic infection or integrates an E. coli chromosome. The phage enzyme integrates and inserts DNA at a specific site, and the site specific, it causes their site specific recombination of the DNA. The integrated phage DNA is termed a prophage, and it replicates with the host pro chromosome. So it can go again and again, repeat, uh, go through uh, meiosis again, or mitosis again and again. And, uh, and um, sorry, meiosis again and again. Mitosis again and again, I'll get it. And it can be uh, excised by phage coated enzyme. So it results in this late infection. Repressor prevents excision, maintains the slicegenic state, so it continues on and on through mitosis. Now, tempered phage infections continue the lambda phage. DNA is excised from the chromosome only about once per 100,000 divisions of the lysosome. So that's a, a think about this, 10,000, 100,000, 10,000 divisions of the lysosome. lysosome. So basically, we have 10,000 times 10,000 to the 10,000 factor of cells that now contain this genome and all of a sudden uh, the, when the uh, uh, when, when something happens inside something happens the, the uh, trigger happens the cell the protease destroys the, the prophage and allows the lytic cycle to start where it starts producing these uh, these virus so it's pretty pretty devastating the lysogen immune is immune to super infection uh, infection by some phage and lytic uh, conversion so the change in the phenotype of lysogen from prophage, for example, toxins encoded for, by phage genes, only strains carrying prophage produce the toxins. The repressor, uh, repressor maintaining integrated prophage also binds to the operator on the incoming phage DNA. It prevents the gene suppression and immunity to super infection. So it creates a, an immune uh, viron or more immune viron in that process. Now we also have filamentous phages, and that's really a single strand of DNA phage. And it's used to reproduce only a single-stranded recumbent DNA. So it's not quite as devastating or quite as massive as what we saw before. They look like long fibers sticking out of the cell. And they cause uh, productive infections. Those cells got killed, but it grow, will grow more slowly. So it'll keep producing, one, one at a time, these new, these new uh, phages. The M3, M13 phage is a model. It attacks the protein on the, on the F pilus of the E. coli. And the single stranded DNA genome enters the cytoplasm and causes the process to begin again in new cells. Now, DNA polymerase synthesizes a complementary strand uh, of the DNA inside the cell, and it's called replicated form, or RF. One strand is used as a template for synthesis of Mr. RNA, uh, copies of this new genome, and the M13 phage coat protein molecules inserted in the cytoplasmic membrane occur. 
The other proteins form spores, and as the phase DNA is excreted through the pores, the coat uh, proteins, uh, the coat proteins coat the DNA to form these nucleocapsids. So what happens is the DNA is pushed out of the cell, but the cell wall is used as a capsid around the cell. Now, the general, you can also get generalized transduction results from packaging error during phase assembly. This is some of the mutations we see. Some phases degrade the host chromosome. Fragments can be mistaken, mistakenly packaged in the phase head. And these phases cannot direct phase replication cycle. So this is termed generalized transducing particles in the following release, they can bind to a new host, they inject the DNA, and the DNA may not integrate via the homologous recombination replace the host DNA, and, but it may create this, this function the cell it injects to. Any gene from the donor cell can be transferred, so it can create a mutation inside our given cells. We have specialized transduction. Uh, that's where we have excision, uh, mistake during transition from the lysogenic or lytic cell, lytic cycle of the temperate phase. The short piece of flaky uh, bacterial DNA is removed. A piece of phage DNA remains. The excised DNA is incorporated into phage heads as defective particles are released. It can bind to the host, inject that piece of DNA. The bacterial genes will integrate that recombination, that DNA, and only bacterial genes adjacent to the integrated phage uh, can help them with the DNA transfer. So this is just another mechanism uh, they use. Now, there are several approaches the bacteria can take to, for defenses. They can prevent phage attachments. They can alter or cover specific receptors on their cell surface. They may have other benefits uh, to bacteria. For example, Staphylococcus aureus or Staph aureus versus protein A, which masks the phage receptors, but also protects against certain human host, uh, human host defenses. Capsules or slime layers, for example, biofilms, also mask those receptors. So bacteria have developed a, 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 a defense system for that. Bacterial defenses against phages also include restriction and modification systems. There are two enzymes, restriction enzymes which recognize cut short nucleotide sequences that, are, that is in the incoming phase DNA. And the bacteria have different versions and hundreds of varieties. There are also modification enzymes that methylate host sequences normally recognized by the restriction enzyme. The restriction enzymes now do not recognize the DNA. The enzymes may methylate phase DNA and allow the infection. So other things that happen against the significant bacteria. Now, the CRISPR system recently discovered clusters of regularly interspersed short palindromic re re repeats, if you will. The phase spacer DNA inserted in the CRISPR, if you will, uh, provides a record of infection. Transcribed is cut small. Small RNA binds to CAS. Uh, create CRISPR shows the sequences, proteins, and the binding of spacer RNA to phase targets a phase for destruction, so it helps to break down the phase or make it make it dissolve. Viruses multiply only inside living cells, as we said before, and they have to cultivate suitable host cells to grow viruses. Bacterial cells are easier than animal cells because uh, they have less defenses. The plaque assays uh, used to quantitate phase particles in samples like sewer and seawater uh, and soil, and soft auger and inoculated with a bacterial host, and specimens poured over the surface of the auger in a given petri dish. The bacterial forms a lawn, if you will, and zones of clearing form the bacterial lysis or plaque. So the, the, the viruses will break down the, the bacteria that are in this lawn, and you'll see these uh, little plaques. Calcium plaques form the units of uh, PFU. Uh, plaques form per unit yields of the titer, as it were. We look at animal virus reproduction. There's a five-step uh, uh, infection cycle. There's a task that we talked about before. The viruses will bind to the receptors. Is the glycoproteins or cytoplasmic membrane. Often more than one is required. For example, HIV binds to two, has to bind to uh, two different cells to affect our, our organism in our body. Normal function is unrelated to viral infection. Specific receptors of tropism is required, so it limits the range of the virus. For example, dogs do not contract measles from humans. Now, there are some viruses that are crossing over. One is actually part of a virus, which affects uh, animal, animal dogs and cats. And we're seeing some crossover to humans. So viruses can mutate and change their host. Now, the next step is penetration, uncoating, diffusion, or the endocytosis. The cell is, the, the, uh, uh, the genome is pushed into the cell. Non enveloped in rice, uh, viruses can fuse with the cell wall, and they will, uh, they will then be released into the cell proper so they can enter the, the nucleus. Here's the mechanism for releasing the envelope viruses that you can also see in the. PowerPoint that you can download from D2L. 
Synthesis is the expression of viral genes produce viral structures and uh, catalytic genes, for example, capsid proteins, enzymes require fermentation. So the synthesis of multiple copies of genome occurs. The most DNA viruses will multiply in the nucleus. They enter through the nuclear pores uh, following that penetration phase. The three general replication strategies depend on the type of vi genome or virus. There's DNA viruses, there's RNA viruses, and there's reverse transcribing viruses. Uh, replication of DNA viruses are usually the nucleus. Pox viruses are exceptions, but they replicate the cytoplasm. And they include all enzymes for DNA and RNA synthesis. Double stranded DNA replication is pretty straightforward in that a single stranded DNA is, is a similar concept, whereas a complement is first synthesized. So you see the, the double stranded DNA, it will then get into the, to the, the nucleus, it will start to uh, create a, a, uh, a, um, a rogue. Uh, messenger RNA, which will start to create uh, abstract proteins, which will affect the mechanism of the metabolism cell. single strand DNA, you'll see it has to go through a complement fix process before it takes those next steps of going into the cell, reprogramming the DNA, and then uh, starting to create uh, different RNA, messenger RNAs. Now, replication of RNA viruses, the majority are single-stranded and replicate in the cytoplasm. They require a virally encoded RNA polymerase, or replicates is sometimes called, which lacks proofreading and allows antigenic shifts. So basically, there's a lot of mutations here. The single-stranded uh, positive RNA is used in messenger RNA. Single-stranded negative RNA is a double-stranded RNA virus that can, can carry replicates to synthesize that new strand. Some RNA viruses are segmented, and reassortment results in this antigenic shift. So basically, they go through a mutation almost every single uh, generation. The replication of reverse transcarbon virus is somewhat interesting and a little more complex. <clears throat> they encode reverse transcriptase makes DNA from RNA. So they, the DNA is created from the RNA. The retroviruses, have, retroviruses that we create have a single-stranded RNA genome, for example. HIV is one of these. Reverse transcriptase synthesizes a single DNA strand, and complementary strand is synthesized. Double-stranded DNA is integrated in the host cell chromosome. And it can direct productive infection or remain latent. So it, can, it cannot be eliminated. So once it's inside, it, there's no medication to kill the virus, so to speak, which is why HIV is so difficult. Now, the next step is assembly. Uh, continuing the protein caps and forms, the genome enzymes are packaged, and takes place in the nucleus in the organelles or cytoplasm. <clears throat> now, release is next. The most actually bud. That means the virons are moved through the cell membrane or cell wall of the, the host organism, and then <clears throat> the host organism is killed, the buds are released. The viral protein spikes insert the host cell membrane, the matrix protein accumulate, and nucleocapsids are extruded. And sometimes they'll use the cell membrane as their nucleocapsids. They're covered with this matrix protein and lipid in the envelope, and some obtain the envelope from the organelles. Their non-envelope virus is released when the host cell dies, often by apoptosis, which means the cell goes through lysis, uh, initiated by the virus or the host, because when the host sees a infected cell, it will try to kill that cell uh, so as not to allow it to continue to produce viruses. This is an animal virus reproduction. We see the virus, uh, viral proteins insert the nucleic acid. Uh, the next step is the viral matrix protein coats the, uh, the, it creates this nucleic acid, it creates this coat from the cell membrane, and the cell membrane is then coats it and moves on to the next cell to attack the next cell. And the interesting thing is because it uses the host cell membrane, it's, it, the most immune system doesn't see that as an as a invasion of some sort. Now, when you look at acute and persistent infections, when acute, acute infections are defined as rapid onset, short duration. Persistent continue for years or sometimes a lifetime, and they may or may not have symptoms. And some viruses have both. For example, HIV can have an acute version, which would be AIDS, and a persistent or long-term system, which is the which is the alternative. And what you're seeing here is that is that process, acute versus versus uh, persistent. Now, persistent infections can be chronic or latent. Chronic infections are continuous production of low levels of those virus particles. Late infections, the viral genome, the provirus, remains silent inside the host cell until it's reactivated. So it goes on and goes on for generation, 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 like we talked about earlier. Now, late infections, uh, they, the provirus integrated the host chromosome or replicates separately, much like a plasmid. It can't be eliminated, and it can later be activated. So it can really continue over time, as it were. What you're seeing here is uh, the uh, viral infection here. The virus moves into the cranial nerve, and uh, in this case, and then it affects the brainstem and the reactivation of the virus in the neuron, 
and the virus moved down the cranial nerves and, and causes this causes disease, whatever that's going to be. Now, tumor is an abnormal growth, and uh, viruses and cause some human tumors that we weren't sure about before. So, a tumor is cancerous and malignant, and it commit and it commit metastasize, which means it can break off cells can break off and move to other parts of the body. The benign tumors uh, don't metastasize. Photo uh, uh, genes, if you will, and tumor suppressor genes work together to stimulate inhibit growth of cell division, so that's the mechanism. Mutation causes abnormal and, and or uncontrolled growth. They usually multiply changes at different sites are required. And viral oncogenes are similar to host photo oncogenes. They can interfere with the host control mechanisms and they induce the tumor. Viruses that do that are HPV, human papillomavirus, hepatitis B, Epstein-Barr virus, which also causes a, a mononucleosis, hepatitis C, human uh, herpes virus type, uh, type eight and HTLV uh, uh, type uh, herpes, uh, um, T I'm sorry, HTLV1, which is an RNA retrovirus that causes adult T-cell leukemia. So these are different mechanisms and different organisms we talked about. Now, productive infections, latent infections of tumors, virus-induced tumors are rare, most result in mutations. So we see that there's the viral DNA forms plasmid. And the viral DNA is plasma, and then all of a sudden it'll go through this process where we'll see uh, we'll see tumors. In this case, we'll see latent infection here. We'll see a tumor, latent infection, productive infection, productive infection. So you see that it create all these variations based on that. Viruses must be grown in an appropriate host cell, so they're uh, so we're done by inoculating live animals. That's all you can tell. So embryonated uh, fertilized chicken eggs were later used uh, to to grow viruses. And cell cultures or tissue cultures are now commonly used. We don't have to use the eggs anymore. Remember that viruses, especially flu viruses that were grown in eggs, if people are allergic to eggs or chickens, you well, then they, are, they can't take the flu virus uh, through vaccine. So they can process animal tissue to obtain primary cultures. The drawback is cells divide only a limited number of times. And the tumor cells often are used, are often used or multiply indefinitely. So that's one of the issues. One of the, issues. the effects of viral replication of cell cultures. Many viruses can cause distinct morphological alterations called the cytopathic effect, and the cells may change shape, fuse, attach to the surface, lies, fuse into a giant multicellular cell, the swell the syncytium, or form an inclusion body, which is the site of the viral replication. So you see the difference that happens inside the culture. So it's not a perfect system. The quantity of animal viruses, we do what we call the plaque assays, which you talked about before, using monolayer of tissue culture cells. We can do direct counts via EM. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then we can do quantum assay, which is elution yield ID50 or LD50. Hemagglutination, which, is, which looks at the relative concentration. So red blood cells, the virons, we see agglutination. Here we can see uh, hemagglutinins. We see hemagglutinins here, no hemagglutinins. We can look at the different viral strains and what they cause. Plant viruses are, pretty, are very common, but they, and they do not attach to cell receptors. They enter via the wounds of the cell wall. They spread through cell openings. Uh, called plasmodesmata. The plants are rarely uh, recover and they lack, because they lack specific immunity. And many viruses are uh, extremely hardy. They're transmitted by the soil, humans, insects, contaminated seeds, tubers, pollen, grafting, and all of the above. Viroids are small single-stranded RNA molecules that affect plants. There are 246 to 365 nucleotides, about one-tenth smallest RNA virus. They form, uh, they form this closed ring, this hydrogen bonding gives them a double strand look. Um, thus far only, uh, only in plants that enter through the wound sites. Many questions remain, how can they replicate, how they cause disease, how do they originate, do they have counterparts in animals, and that's the questions we have about uh, viroids. And this is looking at our next step, which is the prion disease. And again, you'll have to download the, the uh, uh, PowerPoint to use this. Prions are proteinaceous infectious agents. And the interesting thing is they're composed solely of protein. They have no nucleic acid. Think about that. No nucleic acid. So there's no reprogramming of anything. They're linked to slow, fatal human diseases and animal diseases. And they're usually tr uh, transmissible only within certain species, like mad cow disease in England uh, killed 170 people, 170 people. And that was crutchfield jacob disease. So that was one of the, that's the mad cow disease we talk about. So there's all these different diseases occur with these prions. And it's interesting because, again, no nucleic acid, no RNA or DNA. The prion protein accumulates in the neural tissue. The neurons die. 
the tissue develops these holes the brain function deteriorates because it, the, the tissue it looks like Swiss cheese. The characteristic appearance gives rise to a general term for all prime diseases, which is transmissible, spongiform encephalopathies, which is the term for uh, uh, Kirchfeld-Jacobs disease. Here's a good look at what happens. There's a, a nice uh, video which talks about how that virons work. Now, the cells produce a, nor a normal form of protein, of prion proteins, PRPC, are uh, cellular. And the proteins are readily destroyed. The infection prion proteins, uh, they, uh, get, the protein are scaffy, they're resistant to proteases, they become insoluble and aggregate, they're usually resistant to heat and chemical treatments. And the hypothesis hypothesized that PRPSC converts PRPC and misfolding to PRPSC. So basically the protein causes a misfolding of the proteins in the host cell. All right, so we have uh, gone through this uh, chapter 13, which is viruses, viroids, and prions. Uh, have a good day.